This next question is, how do you upgrade the memory and hard drive on an Acer Aspire 1 10.1 inch D255E netbook? Okay, so let's install this solid state drive and memory. For this upgrade, three simple tools are required, an old credit card or some other kind of plastic card, but it has to be fairly firm. This is used to pry or pop that keyboard off. A flat top screwdriver, it can't be too big though, something pretty small, and this is to aid the removal of the keyboard, as well as a Phillips screwdriver to remove the screws. The first thing you want to do is disconnect any power adapter. Once that's done, remove the battery. A lot of the newer netbooks, especially the tiny ones, have no access to the hard drive or the memory. So what you need to do is access this stuff by taking off the keyboard first. And this is the case here. I will need to remove this keyboard very carefully. And to do so, there are a number of clips here at the top. There's one by the F4, F8, and F12, and there's also a couple other ridges around it to try and you know keep that keyboard into place when you push it back in, but we want to lift it off. Now, I found that the easiest way to do this is actually to bend this piece of plastic right here. Of course, the battery is removed, so you can do that and bend it so that it literally pops off. You can use a flat top screwdriver along with bending and it should pop up fairly easily. Just bend it and push this tab in. The keyboard should release. Uh, do the same thing here at the F8. And of course, this will depend on your particular netbook uh, where these little release points are. Now I was able to get my fingernail under the keyboard here at the top to be able to pry it up. If you can't, just use a, you know, some kind of a plastic card, like an old credit card or something like that to get underneath it. You don't want to do any damage. Don't use a knife or a screwdriver because you could damage, uh, you know, the keyboard or something like that or leave marks. Uh, I'll just pull it up now. And you have to do this fairly heavily. And here you go. It's released. And now you just pull it out and then carefully lodge it on top. This is attached to the a netbook via this little ribbon cable. You can also pull this off if you choose to, just to give you uh, more working space. And regardless of the netbook, there should be some instructions here on this plastic panel or piece to indicate how you can push the bottom off because that's what you will need to do. In my case, it indicates that I need to remove four screws, number ones, and they're labeled one, one, one. And then the second part of the procedure is number two, and that's to push through this little hole right here to push that bottom piece off. In my case, I removed four screws. There's two on the left, one at the top, and another one at the right. Now I'll push down through this hole and hopefully the bottom piece will pop off. And it did. And now with this bottom piece removed, you can very easily access the hard drive, memory, and other items. Now before going any further, remember to ground yourself. This just ensures that you won't damage any sensitive electronic devices. Now let me first upgrade the memory. To remove the memory, all you need to do is push out on these two tabs, one on either side. Simply press down and out a little tiny bit, and then slip the memory out, and then slide the new memory in and push down. Now to remove the hard drive, it's a little bit more involved. First, you'll need to remove a single screw. There's also another screw hole over here, but in my case, there wasn't a screw in that one, so a single screw right here. This will vary, of course, depending upon what kind of netbook or notebook that you do have. You might have more screws to remove than this. It may be a totally different procedure. But usually you'll find the hard drive in a casing of its own, and that is the situation right here. And usually there is a tab to pull on, and this one does have a tab as well. Just flick that up, and with this screw removed, you can very easily pull it this way, and then it will just simply come right up. So with the hard drive removed, you'll need to remove this case that it's in, and there's two screws on each side that you'll need to remove. So with the four screws removed, 
I can now easily take this hard drive out of the casing and next just carefully place the new drive into the casing and then secure it using the four screws. Now all you need to do is carefully slide it back into place. Next, remember to install this single screw and then just simply pop the back panel on. Attach the four screws. Now if you did disconnect the ribbon cable so you could easily take the keyboard completely off, remember to attach that ribbon cable and then simply push the keyboard down into place until it clicks all the way around and it's completely secure. Install the battery and if needed, connect the power cord. Now this is the Windows Experience Index. Note the base score, which is determined from the lowest subscore. Now you really won't find much of a difference in any of the subscores except for the primary hard drive. The memory you sometimes will, I mean, you're only going from one gigabyte to two gigabyte. The size difference is not going to give you any kind of real you know, benchmark performance increase, unless of course the memory has a lower latency. Now this is the Windows Experience Index after the new hardware is installed. And to recap, I upgraded from one gigabyte of memory to two gigabytes and upgraded the regular hard drive to a solid state drive. Now the base score has not changed because the processor is the same, but look at this. The memory, the graphics, the gaming graphics, and the primary hard disk have changed. They've all increased and this is to be expected. Upgrading the memory and especially the hard drive to a solid state drive in a netbook, notebook, desktop system really truly does make a huge difference in overall performance.